And they done found artifacts proving it and everything that Ron White discovered that years ago. Look up Ron White's album tomorrow. It was a God's archaeologist and a God's scientist. Right? Or we will destroy this place. These are the angels talking. We will wipe this place out. Or we will destroy this place. Because this, the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Now you have to skip my teaching on the apocrypha to understand what the cry that went up to the Lord. These were people that were godly people that they killed and tortured. Um, give my teaching on the apocrypha, Solomon Lamar. It fills in the, the blanks here what that cry was, certain people. It moved God to wipe this city out. That were martyred. The righteous people. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons in law, which married his daughters. So his son in law that was married to his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons and all. He seemed like a joke. He was like a joker to them. <laughs> like, man, get out of here. Tell them the good Lord gonna destroy this city, right? No different than today. People don't believe one day God gonna destroy this earth. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened by, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. If you want to get burnt up because of their sin and go out with them, you better get up and get the move. And while he lingered, he's dragging his feet. You don't want to leave this little comfy. But don't forget, Lot's rich. Yeah, he's comfortable there. He's like a noble living in Solomon the Mark. He's like a rich man just giving up his his palladial estate, the equipment. He's rich in Solomon the Mark. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and up on the hand of his wife, and up on the hand of his two daughters. So he, the angels grabbed him, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and sent him without the city. So in the twinkling of an eye, he was raptured up out of there and set without the city in a flash. The thanks to these angels. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. The angel told him, Run for your life. Look not behind thee. Now, if you to type the right in your Bible, underline, look not behind me. Don't look back. It's the title of this. Psalm of Gamar. Don't look back. Angel warning. Neither stay thou in all this plain. Escape to the mountains. Go to the mountains. Be as far away from this wicked city. This wicked Sodom and Gomorrah. I also did Sodom and Gomorrah do as thou will. I knew it. I would think of the other one. They had to deal with Hellingwood. That's our modern day Sodom and Gomorrah is Hellingwood. Exactly like Sodom and Gomorrah. I worked in Hellingwood years ago. I know that for an actual fact. And they put me on a cross literally for being a Christian conservative in Hellingwood. You will not survive. You will end up getting blackballed just like me. Work his door for those that are conservative and Christian and never would believe me. And it came to pass when they had brought them forward, and Lot said unto them, I'm sorry, verse 18, and Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Here he is. Here come Mr. Green, Mr. Cush, Mr. Good Life. It'd be like these prosperity pimps giving up their riches. They used to the good life, man. They used to the private jets. They'll say anything to keep that wealth. It'll slow you any kind of way. 
after they sell all that stuff and give up, like I said, and take up a cross, start preaching real Christianity, I'll be the first to defend it. For real defend it. Not pretend, not pretend to defend it. <laughs> Behold now, that thy servant both found, if I have found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified and thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me, in saving my life, I cannot escape to the mountains. Ah, man, I ain't in no shape for the mountains. Mountains, you got to be a mountain man. You got to be rough. Now, I love the mountains. You follow street priests over the years. You know, I used to camp in the mountains, the forest. I love nature now. Indian reservations and all this. That's me. But this man here, the good life, he, that's not him. It's not the mountain type. And I cannot escape to the mountain. Lest some evil take us. Uh, some evil, excuse me, take me. And I die. So he's a man that's got fear of death. We all got to die. You could die in the city, or you could have died being raped to death in that city, but he's afraid of a snake that might bite him in the mountains. Behold, now, this only is near, but behold now, this city is near to thee. Oh, excuse me, to flee unto. This city is near to flee unto. And it is a little one, just a little city. It's not big at all. Oh, let me escape there. Still trying to keep the good cushy life. Now, I'm sure he got his money with him. As much of it as he could carry. Might not took much valuables, but I'm sure he got a lot of money. He took the gold and silver. So he wants to set up in another city for the good life. And he said unto them, See, I have it accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city. So the angel said, okay, we'll accept you going to this little tiny city for which thou hast spoken. Hasty, hurry up, escape thither, run, man. I already gave you a head start but get you outside the city in the flat. For I cannot do anything till thou become hither. I can't destroy the city until you get far away from the city so I can destroy it. Therefore, or the city, actually five cities. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen up on the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And you can still, and it's rain for real, modules. And you can see these little modules. A pure 98.5 grade sulfur. It was raining, and God rained fire with it. So it created a super vortex of heat that eviscerated the whole city, engulfed the whole city in flames. The fire ended up feeding with on, its, on itself. If anything God's an expert in, you don't understand this word, it's fire. I mean, you look up at that sun, 93 million miles away, or you can look at hellfire. <laughs> God's an expert in fire. He burnt this city to a crib, brought hell on top of the head. He burnt it to a crib. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone, and fire from the Lord out of him. And he overthrew these cities, those five cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and all that which grew upon the ground. This, this town was very fertile. It was watered plains. That's what Lot chose when Abraham asked him which, which way you want to go. Uh, go east, or you can go west, but it's time for us to separate. 
God didn't bless Abraham, by the way, until he got rid of Lot. He got rid of that family that was holding him back. We're going to touch on that in the New Testament for you people that love your family more than God. And he overthrew those cities in a plain, and all the inhabitants of the city that grew upon the ground. But his wife, but, I always remember them buts and thens in the Bible, but his wife looked back from behind him. She looked back, she was following Lot, walking straight ahead. The angels warned him not to look back. They didn't say what would happen. They just said don't look back. She looked back. And she became a pillar of salt. Now you can still see that pillar of salt to the day. And that's called Lot's wife. And it looks like a woman. A big old statue of a woman in salt. And the plains that was what used to be Sodom and Gomorrah. Over in Israel today. You know, dead seer. As a testimony, not to look back. Christianity is looking. Christianity number one is in the present. Jesus said, go into the day, you to say tomorrow, not the future, not the past. Definitely not the past. The reason she looked back, because her heart was back there with her loved ones. I'm sure this woman had cousins, family, maybe aunties, uncles, definitely had children. No doubt, probably in Sodom and Gomorrah still. Her heart was in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why she looked back. And she has been made a preserved salt to preserve. To preserve the memory of those that look back. What happened to you? We're not to be looking back to the past, wishing that that was a problem. It's the state with the Jews and Israel. The elites and garlic are always with Egypt, Egypt. Same with the Hirsch. Her heart was in Sodom and Gomorrah, just as bad. The wicked city. She longed for sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. They longed for the sin of Egypt. It's a type of the world and sin. Alright, moving on. Turn to 1 Kings 19.19. A lot of 19s here. 1 <laughs> Kings 19. The call of God is without recall. When God calls you, don't look back. You burn your ties with the sinful world. The world is anti-God, pro-Satan. Burn your ties with family that can't, that will pull you down. That a world, that's what Sodom and Gomorrah represented. They was, the family wanted to stay in the world. And her heart was with that family that was in the world. And she, Even though she's moving with, with God out of the city, her heart was still in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's a lot of Christianity today. Same business on the side of the street. They're no different than what the world's doing in a lot of these so-called churches, church organizations, and uh, church denominations. It's all the same. It's the business, same business on the side of the street. They're in Sodom tomorrow. They're in Egypt. They're in Babylon. A lot of these churches. Nineteen, what did I say? Nineteen, nineteen. So he departed. Now this is Elijah. So he departed. I taught on this to the call of God, um, dealing with Elijah. So he de departed then and found Elijah, uh, the son of Japheth, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. 12 is the number of governmental perfection. 
before him. And he said with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. That's the call of God. Called him to be a minister. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. Let me say goodbye to my family, man. I mean, you know, you can't just leave them without saying goodbye. Go back again. For what and for what I have for what have I done to thee? He said, hey, man, you grown. Do what you want to do. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew him. So he killed all the oxen, all twelve, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people. And they did eat. He burnt his past. He burned any bridge to the past. That was his business. And the man was a farmer. That was his, that was like taking and burning your, whatever instruments you use, if it's a car, a truck, whatever, and today for, the, for your business. He burnt his path. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. And he ministered unto Elijah for 11 years before he became a minister himself, prophet himself. Now let's move on. Keeping it moving here. Now as a man that didn't look back, he burnt the past to make sure there wasn't no bridge to go back to it. And he moved forward. He left his parents. Because he knew he wouldn't see them again. Call of God. Alright, let's move on. Matthew 8 21. Let's go to Matthew 8 21. Or oh, excuse me. Luke. Before we go to Matthew, let's go to Luke 962. That's more in the order with since we're on plows and oxen, might as well stay there. Luke 9.62, now we're in the New Testament. All these nines, a lot of nines. Luke Jesus said unto him, well, let's back up. Let's go back to verse 58. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have no place to lay his head. In other words, Jesus was homeless. All you fat cats, prosperity pimps out there, Jesus was homeless. Telling you right here, he didn't have a home. Stuff in wildernesses, wherever he laid his head, was his home. And pretty much his disciples was the same way, but they sold everything. They followed Jesus, so they slept with him. He was camping out. Because that. The same was true with Elijah. That in Elijah that we just left, they were homeless too. But I throw that in for free. And he said unto, and he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. I have a funeral to go to, Lord. I can't really follow you right now, but after the funeral, I'll get behind you. Jesus said to him, Now this is pretty cold here. Let the dead bury the dead. Let the dead bury the dead. In other words, Christ is saying, the people that are in the world, of the world, that are dead in trespasses and sins, 
Let them bury their own dead. Now, when a Christian dies, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord, we're going straight to heaven. So if you boo-hoo and cry and running around, depressed, you're in a dead state because you're 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 for someone. All that is for someone that's dead that had no hope. You believe that person had no hope, because Paul made it clear in the New Testament. When a Christian died, we're supposed to pop champagne corks and it's a celebration, something like a Greek funeral. I don't do funerals. Anybody knows me, I don't do. But the point I'm making. I mean, this verse might have had subliminally an influence on my life. I don't know, but I, I just never, since I was a kid, I just never was there. I tried to catch you before you get out of here, and I've caught a lot of people on their deathbeds. You see a lot of people die before they got out of here, including family. But the point I make, and I bring you plenty of flowers to smell while you're alive. You can smell them while you're dead. But anyway, Jesus told this man, see, brother Cohen. The man said, I got a funeral to go to. He said, follow me. And let the dead bury the dead. Don't go to your dad's funeral. See, this kind of stuff you don't hear in the church. I did a series <laughs> churches, Congregation of the Dead. I said uh, most of these pastors go to these Jesuit cemetery schools. They call them cemetery schools. I call them cemetery schools. To get their morticians and bombing certificate to preach to the Congregation of the Dead. And that was one of the, the, the videos I did, Congregation of the Dead. That's most churches that did. And so, you know, there's no, it makes perfectly sense why. It's just like, if you study ancient cultures and things, they, a lot of it had to do with death. But we're gonna see God, is not that God, he's not the God of the dead, but the living, I'll prove that to you in a minute. But when we die as Christians, there is hope. We're in heaven. This should be a celebration. If Brother Jay was to die, I'm going to be with my Creator in Christ Jesus. I don't want nobody to shed one tear for me. I don't want if you think crying tears of joy that I made it. The glory. That's what real Christianity is about. Not that morbid climbing to a casket sin. Now, if you're doing that, you probably, probably the individual that you're doing that for, you deep down believe they didn't make it to heaven, and you sure wouldn't be crying. Because you'll see them again in heaven. That's what heaven is about, folks. There's a reunion coming. So why are we depressed and sad if someone died? Well, we're going to see them. Yeah, I'll see you. Even David got it when his baby died. God killed his baby because he Baby born out of adultery and sin, he, he, he blessed him with Solomon. But the point I'm making, he said, I'll see my son again. Damn, he was okay after he died. That's what real Christianity is. I'll see my brother, my sister, whomever, my dad, I'll see him again. If they may. Now, if you were depressed and sad, like I said, if Paul said, you're depressed and sad because you feel deep down they didn't make it. Else you, your Christianity would rise above that level to the future, our future. We're pilgrims and strangers down here on our way to heaven. So we'll see and be reunited with our loved ones again for eternity if they died in Christ. That's why Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. They died outside of God, outside of Christ. Jesus said unto them, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Calling the guy precedes the funerals of your loved ones. And another also came and said, Lord, I will follow thee all these preconditions. I will, but I got to do this first. But let me first go 
and bid them farewell. Now, isn't it, remember, Elijah, Elisha had the same problem with Elijah, which are at my house. Let me go say goodbye first to my people before I follow you, Christ. And Jesus said to them, now this is important. Remember I told you we're going to get back to plowing again. Remember Elisha was plowing the field when the mantle was laid on him. No man, this is the calling of God, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You got to let go of your past. Looking back. You can't look back. If you're looking back while you're plowing, you're going you to have some zigzag rows. <laughs> Not going to be straight and narrow. The field that you plow. Now, this is Christ talk. You see how the Old Testament unfolds into the new and the old? That both had to do with plowing. That man burnt the plow, burnt everything. Uh, burnt the uh, oxen. He burnt that pax and followed the man of God, took up that man. And this man is facing the same thing with one greater than Elijah Christ himself. The man was thrown on him. And he said, I got to go say goodbye to my family. Jesus said, put your hand to the plow. You ain't fit for the kingdom of heaven. Even family. Family alive or family dead is not the call between you and the calling of God that he laid on your life. And we're not to look back to our past life or past family life because Jesus is about to make that clear right here. We're going to read this. That's going to, that's going to clear that up. Matthew 8, 21. Now we go to Matthew. Matthew 8, 21 through 22. All about, look, this message is look about looking back. Starting with Lot's wife, a pillar of salt, to remind us. Christianity deals in the now. Deals in the now. Not the past. Not the future. And so, our hope is the coming of Christ Jesus and straighten this world out with a rod of iron. 8.21 And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first that I may go bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Okay, that was the same thing. Uh, 22 Matthew 22, 31. Sorry about that. The same verse. This is what it was in Luke. So we heard it twice. One was Matthew, one was Luke. So verse 22, 31. But as touching the moral, but let me read this again. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which is spoken unto you by God, saying, I am God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now that ties perfectly. And the Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Let the past. So many people are stuck in the past. That's question with the death of loved ones. You got to keep it moving. You got to move forward. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Like I said, if a person has hope, you'll see him again in heaven. Celebration of heaven is a also a big reunion of those that died in the Lord. And God is not the God of the dead, of the hopeless, but the God of the living. Read this one more time. For the heart of him. 2231. 
but as touching the resurrection of the dead. Now, there's going to be a resurrection of the dead, the dead too, as well as the resurrection of the living. Have ye not read that which is spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. No looking back with God, including the dead. But like I said, we'll meet again. So this is very important for those right now that are busy looking back with the dead and, and climb into a coffin. This message is for you. My God is the God of the left. You will see your loved one again if they're in heaven. And if you truly are a Christian, this what separates real Christianity from the pseudo-Christianity. Eternity. Moving on, if you really believe in it. Matthew 10, 34. Let's go to Matthew 10, 34. Looking back, don't do it. The past is the past. Don't climb into a coffin in the past. Don't put anyone before God. Don't look back. The call of God is without recall. There's no need to put his hand to the plow. Looking back is not fit for the kingdom of man. Get out of the past. Matthew 10, 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Now this is Christ's peace. Joy to the world, the Lord has gone. Peace and goodwill to men. No, same what Christ is saying. Some of you need to crack your Bibles and see what the real Christianity is about. That's why we read this book. 